Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Game Vault podcast stream. I'm your host, Mark, and this is the news hour for July 12th, 2024. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to start saying the dates in these, um, even though I think for the most part they will be in the video titles. But, um, you know, just for audio listeners out there so that they know that they didn't autoplay onto one they didn't really want to listen to. So, um, it has been an interesting week. Um, so, for many reasons, but I'm glad to be here talking about video games with you, um, as, uh, Game Ball Cat has awakened. Um, so, let's, uh, yeah, let's get started with been playing. Um, we will start off with, um, just going through the games we've been streaming. Um, so, yeah, first off we have, um, you know, Persona 3, um, we played... 10, 11 hours of it last week um, for stream. Um, we had the uh, eight or so hours on on um, July 4th, and then we played another two to three hours, I think, on Saturday. Um, and we're getting, we're, we're in the end game now. Um, we found out the true villain. Um, we we're getting a bunch of max level um, social links. We're running out of things to do at points in the um, uh, game because uh, normally at night we were going to work so we could get money, but now we have way too much money because I spend way too much time in Tartarus. Um, and we have over almost 200,000 <laughs> 200, yen. Um, so we're good on weapon stuff. And, and since we've been going into Tartarus a lot, um, we've been um, collecting enough stuff. Uh, we do the Masad things and um, able to get like some of the special weapons. I don't know if we'll get any of the master weapons and all that. But my goal is to try and finish the Elizabeth, uh, like do all 100 of Elizabeth's things. I don't know if we'll be able to do it, uh, but we'll get pretty damn close. Um, I might have to grind a little bit in the dungeon to do it. Um, I don't know if they make you stretch past Alice, which I think Loki's on my list, I think, because uh, I got two, um, Persona builds that she's looking for. One is Alice, and I think the other one is Loki. Um, I know Alice is level 68. We're currently level 61 or 62, so our next trip through Tartarus at the end of the, the beginning of the next stream should get us to about that level. I keep the 15% the XP item on, um, what's his name? Um, Rufus, uh, just so we can get him up as high as possible and try and get all that stuff done. I think, like, maybe for, like, the final dungeon, I'll switch him to something effective, um, for him and not the 15% thing. Um, but we'll keep working on that. But story's getting real good. I, we only have one member of that, uh, you know, um, side group left, um, so we're looking good, yeah, I don't want to spoil too much on here, we'll talk about more, um, on the stream Saturday, um, so you can probably watch the archive of that on Twitch and definitely on YouTube soon, uh, but yeah, if you want to go to Spoil City because you know of all the good shit that's coming up, um, our Discord has a, uh, spoiler, a channel, um, that everybody can go talking um, for these games that I'm playing. So, I can't wait for Saturday Persona. Um, only because it puts us closer to starting a new game, and I do like starting new games. Um, so, Eternal Night's coming up soon. Um, hey, Metal Militia. Nice to see ya. Um, and then, speaking of new games, um, we started our new uh, Retro Roulette Endurance Run game. Which was uh, Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Um, we got Past the Mines. I am almost... Did I game over? I think I might have gamed over at the end. Um, we might have to redo the mine parts. Um, uh, we, we were one level or two levels away from getting the save point on the mountain part. The second level world essentially if we're using mario terminology um but yeah yeah we got um it's the furthest i've gotten through like 
I, I don't say casual playthrough as, I don't count that as when I was a kid, because, you know, we did get further because it's all we had to play sometimes. Um, but in terms of times I fired it up recently to just play, this is the furthest I've gotten. So, I am excited to go forward from here. Um, so, hopefully, um, we can have some fun with this. Um, as I said before, the first game we spun the wheel for would have taken us a year and a half to finish with the one-hour Retro Without Endurance Run rules. Um, so, we are not doing that. That might come up as a game for in the future for another day. But, um, for now, yep, Donkey Kong Country. Um, I, I am liking it. Um, the one main thing with it still is, I don't know if this is because of how I'm playing it or the controller I'm using, but every so often I've, like, slipped off the edge while hitting the jump button and the character does not react. Um, I don't know if that's a known thing in the software or if it's just the way I'm playing it. It's just something I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, but yeah, that was really the only frustration I had um, playing the game. So that was uh, DKC. Um, update on Nier. We're probably going to try and play it Sunday. We didn't play last Sunday. Um, not for any technical reasons or anything. Um, as all of you know that have been around the channel for a while, uh, my niece plays travel softball. I go to all of her all of her tournaments. Um, and uh, her team is actually was decent this year and good. Normally what happens, and for all of you travel ball parents out there, you'll understand the sentence that I'll say. We love our kids or nieces in my in niece in my case. Uh, but as much as we want them to win and succeed, we just want them to lose on Sunday so we can go home earlier. Um, but, uh, unfortunately, her team has been too good to do that. So, they made the final of some, uh, U.S. AAA, U.S. U Triple S, whatever it's called, um, a softball a tournament, which I think was like the PA Eastern State Championships or something they called it. I, trust me, there were 14... Teams in this thing from like one section of Pennsylvania, so it was definitely not the Pennsylvania State Championships. Um, so they made it to the finals um, of that somehow, um, and I say that as all love to my daughter, uh, to my niece. Um, but yeah, so that the finals ended at um, seven forty-five, and it was like an hour twenty drive from the place. Um, and, yeah, by the time I got home, it was like 9, 9.30. <laughs> um, I am not sorry about that part, but it is the, it is the travel ball mantra of, um, you talk to enough travel ball parents, it's like, we love when they win, but it also wouldn't mind that they lose on Sundays, so we can get home earlier. It's like, you know, the kids might be upset, but hey, now I can go do some laundry. Um, but yeah. And she had a really good weekend. Um, she had a walk-off home run to win one of the games. Um, had a couple throwouts from center field. Her team played really well. Her friend pitched amazing. Um, so it was fun. Uh, it was really hot. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that was, that was fun. So that's why there was no near on Sunday. There will be near this Sunday. Um, because I think, I think that problem I thought I was having with it should work. Um, so we will be doing that. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that's all the stream. I don't think I've played anything else on stream. No, because I beat Super Mario World before. Okay. All right. So let's move on to, um, the game I am playing. Um, I got to have I played anything else? No, no, we played two games. Um, but we'll, we'll go to the one I played less of. Um, I'm still going through Elden Ring. Um, and now, um, I'm just, I'm just going through and making, getting levels. I think mainly right now, I just gotta get my vigor up, especially because I'm like a magic boy. Um, uh, I found a good sword, as I said previously, that helps if I need to use swords. Like, um, some of the, some of the, um, enemies don't require, you know, to use magic or waste your magic. Um, so this sword helps cut them down in like one or two hits instead of the 
Wolverine Claws, which were taking a lot more hits. And so, I was able to boost it up. I two-hand it because, to be honest, I don't use shields. And um, only in, like, certain situations. And, you know, I don't need to get my strength all the way up to match to one-hand this sword. I can two-hand it and use my points elsewhere. So, that is what I'm currently doing. Um... And I'm um, just learning the spells. I got a couple new um, rods that I think will help with the magic boy part. Um, I got to get my intelligence up to 60 to use the uh, one from the uh, queen um, that I used her boss souls essentially to buy. So we're working towards all that. Um, yeah, yeah. Still having fun with it. Going to be something I feel like I could jump in and out of for years, to be honest. Because I jumped right back in. It took me like 20 minutes to sort of get back into the groove and remember how to play my character. And then from then on, I've been having a blast. So, um, yeah, yeah, probably might jump, might jump into some more this weekend. But um, I say that all with a caveat and a big giant asterisk. Because the newest game I picked up this week... Um, is one that I've become semi-obsessed with. Um, and I'm probably going to play it for a long time after we're done streaming here. Um, I picked up uh, Zenless Zone Zero, or ZZZ, as it is probably easier to say. Or Triple Z, or whatever you want to say. Um, and I love that game. Um, I love... Uh, I like Genshin Impact when it came out. I wouldn't say love. Um, I had some fun with it going around doing stuff, but it didn't hit. This, this hit immediately, um, in terms of it, I'm trying to think to do the argument for why I never got into, um, uh, the second game, which I'm blanking on the name, um, but the, the style was immediate. Um, and it was like, oh yeah, I, this, yeah, I get this. This is, this is me. Um, the combat is really good, um, in terms of using, um, you know, the Honkai Star Rail. There you go. Okay. I was completely blanking on what that second game was, um, that was popular. Uh, my niece, Kitty Ashcat, um, for those of you that have been long time vaulters, um, got really into that game as well as Genshin, um. Which, before I get deeper into my, <laughs> my ZZZ stuff, so I texted her. Um, as much as she likes video games and is up on stuff, she is not, like, the news kind of sore that we were growing up. And she sort of finds out things either through me or her friends. Like, she's not, like, looking up, you know, things on TikTok or, you know, IGN and things like that to read news stories. So I texted her, and I asked her if she's playing this, and she was like, what? Why? No, I'm not. And the way Gen Z types, those were all single word text messages I got back. Um, and I told her who made the game and all that. And her only response, which I'm going to have to talk to her in person before I report back to you guys. Um, and she was like, oh, that game. Yeah, I've seen some clips. Is it good? And I was like, yeah, I'm loving it. And she was like, nice. And that is all we've talked about it. So, just the inner workings of a text conversation between two very awkward people. Um, so, I'm going to have to wait until I see her in person to get her true thoughts and maybe get her to download the game. But yeah, going back to my experience. Um, as Night Duck says in the chat, again, for those of you... Listening or watching on YouTube, you can join us live at 9 p.m. every Friday and join in the chat and just have conversations and make points that, like Night Duck is making, that is exactly uh, what I was thinking. Um, he's saying the combat feels like he's playing the big fight scene in Advent Children. And that's a fair way to sum it up if you've seen Advent Children. Um, I love the... I love the way that the flow of combat is easy to understand if, if i'm wording that correctly um it feels right in my head saying that like going from you have three characters and you can sort of like 
have them help out and do special moves and sort of jump in and out of the battle and assist and things like that. But just the flow of that is like becomes like second nature and the only time the only thing that took me a little while to get is having my brain notice who um, is what picture when you have to do the LB, RB, or L1, R1 um, sort of uh, assist. Um, so you can go from your if stun character to your attack character to maybe you have a support or you have, you know, uh, anomaly, you know, character, whoever, however your mix is. And you know how to bounce to each one to raise your points to get your special. Um, I haven't perfected it yet, but I've gotten pretty good at knowing who to jump to when. Um, and I already got seven characters? I think it's seven. You get the three that you get, um, uh, the Cunning Hairs, um, which are three very well-written characters for Genshin Impact. Um, in terms of, um, I, I have leaned towards, um, I think it's Ashby, is how you say? The the sort of robot android thing, I guess she, she they are. Um, I think it's a very well done character to put besides Nicole, who is very much a con artist, sort of liar to get money. Um, and the other one is uh, basically an android robot thing that only tells the truth. And always a fun dynamic in, in uh, movies and anime and stuff like that. And then Billy Kid is just your goofy anime character um, who, you know, brings a lot of character, you know, to the scenes he does. And sometimes a little cringe, but, you know, he he, he nails what he's supposed to be doing there. Um, Anby. Anby. That's it. Um, uh, the only disappointment in terms of characterization is I, t I don't really feel feel what the your two main characters are the ones that run the video store um they seem a little dry in 2d um yeah that's <laughs> that's that's a good that's a good thing as as um uh, Bill, billy is a robot is a robot okay i just thought he was like a a human like a cyborg thing who just put robot parts on himself um, but I could be wrong. Uh, but either way, as Night Duck says, uh, uh, and be wearing a hat that says, uh, be patient, I'm autistic, which I guess could be the read on that character too. I may have misread it. I'll completely understand that. Um, but yeah, those three are great. I love those three. Like I said, the, um, your main characters are in the video store, um, I don't have much personality for me. Um, like, a lot of the personality from... Um, I forget her name. The the sister of the siblings. Um, I really should, like, take notes and have it written down here and not trust my memory as I get older. Um, but her personality is basically based off of your choices, essentially. So you can make her sarcastic or naive or whatever. And then the... the <laughs> wise. Wise and Bell. Okay, yeah. And, um... Yeah, and... <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll let... As I've been doing for most of this, I'll let Night Duck um, give the explanation better than I can. Um, wise, who is the, the male... Um, character say, has, says um, the best description is that Wise has a cabinet full of beauty products and Belle, um, who is the female, um, the sister um, uses a men's 13-in-1 toothpaste and shampoo like essentially yeah, that's a great explanation for those guys I wish they had more personality um, but the cunning hairs do enough to make up for it um, I've only met one more character I've met a cat girl um so far, and, um, like, sort of on the fence right now. I'm not through her story yet, um, as part of it. Uh, but, yeah, 
yeah. Um, just a lot of, lot of charm with it, especially. Um, I love the dog in the newspaper stand being named Wolf. That's amazing. Um, I love the fact that you have to lie to the girl that runs the weapon shop. So that, because she does not know that the uh, W engine things in the game are weapons. She thinks they're just toys. So you basically have to make sure you lie to her. Um, I don't know if there's... Because like, there's some things that are choices. Um, so I don't know if maybe if you choose not to lie to her. Maybe it has a different thing that happens later in the story or something. But just for, I, I'm lying to her because just the conception of the fact that you have to do that um, is pretty funny. I love the guy that runs the ramen shop. Um, pretty well done. Like, there, everything, Genshin had a lot of this too. Um, uh, Paimon or whatever, the little fairy girl or whatever, was the only thing that really annoyed the shit out of me about Genshin. Um, and thankfully, this doesn't really have anything like that. Um, so I am playing as much of this game as I possibly can. Next week, the game of the year comes out, so um, I may be touch and go with with this. But I think I think most of my non-streaming time or non-hanging out with people time um, this weekend will be spent playing uh, ZZZ. Um, I downloaded the first Descendant. Have not touched it. Have no desire to touch it after playing <laughs> ZZZ. Um, it led to a great conversation to me and Night Duck had where I said, hey, so I downloaded these two games, you know, that are free to play that people have been, you know, you know, talking about. And he immediately went, you can play them both, but you're going to like ZZZ. Like, you're going to be amazed how different they are, and you're going to stick with that one. And so I immediately launched ZZZ. Didn't stop playing it until for like three hours uh, on a work night. And immediately texted him the next day. Um... And said, um, yep, you're 100% right. <laughs> it's good to have friends that know your taste and things. Our friend Ant, um, that's on the TC Tam podcast, they call us a movie, like, knows my music taste. And when uh, Olivia Rodrigo first came out, um, he sent me the single and went, you're going to love her. Just trust me. And I played that first song. Um, and, and it was just like, yep. Yeah, Hundred <laughs> percent. So it's always fun. Oh, and next week it's kind of a joke what I said, Night Duck. Um, the college football game comes out next week. So personally, I'm going to be playing that game from July to December. So um, that's why I meant by game of the year. Um, it prob I probably won't rank it in my top five for game of the year, no matter how good it is, because it's not really fair, because I'll probably be um, judging it with uh, college football colored glasses. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that game's going to take over my life um, once it comes out next week. So, yeah, I'm probably, theoretically, unless I pick up anything else, um, i got to look what's coming out. Um, I could easily see my... Um, from here on out, the games I'm playing are going to be ZZZ, college football, and whatever I'm streaming. And that is it. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn in, well, Call of Duty. I'll, probably, I'll play Call of Duty multiplayer when that comes out. We have a news item about that, um, about being able to play uh, Call of Duty. Um, all right, no problem. See you later. Night Duck. Enjoy. Um, yeah, so that was ZZZ. Um, he got to stay for the whole topic here, which is what he was looking forward to. Um, so yeah, I am excited, um, about the rest of the year in gaming. Um, let's get to the news. Make sure I have the right news item up, because I was doing some research on the other things. Alright, I think we can switch over. All right, first things first, there's new NCAA college football news <laughs> to put out there. Um, so they announced the Road to Glory, which is the single-player mode, um, where you play as one player. Um, 
and try and take him through a college career and eventually to the NFL. Um, I didn't get a chance to really deep dive into this, like at the Dynasty, because Road to Glory is like probably the second mode I'll play the most on here. Um, but it, it's a it's a big disparity between that and Dynasty. So I was way more interested in Dynasty. So in short, um, here, um, if Road to Glory is your thing, you can jump in, you know, and dive into that um, what uh, EA has released on it. But yeah, I just wanted to give you. a brief over overview here um so you can start your journey um as either you can just go in as an elite player start out as immediately like 79 overall possibly start and play all four years you can do blue chip where you might have to fight a little bit contributor where you're going to be depending on the school you go to could end up on the bench the first year red shirted uh, or you can do an underdog and play as a two star and work your way up and do all the things um, to up your stats and sort of do, you know, the, the hard way. That's pretty cool. It gives you a lot of options here um, to start out. Um, you'll get to play five positions. Uh, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, middle linebacker, and cornerback. Which makes a lot of sense. Um, I can see some people wanting to play defensive line. Uh, but that is such a different... Um, like position to play um, that I don't think as a first go in Road to Glory, I don't think you need to play off need to play defense or offensive line. Maybe in the future um, you can do that, uh, but yeah, these five positions are perfectly fine. These are the ones everybody probably plays anyway. Maybe safety safety might be the only one that's missing on there, um, unless if cornerback covers that, which I don't think it does. Um, the only one on offense really is tight end, but I guess it's the same idea where you would have to block, um, and they just didn't want to, they didn't want to deal with that stuff on how to improve your block game. Uh, so, you know, I think they're, 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 I think they're pretty much starting off good here. Um, and then, you know, you also... You know, you'll get scholarships based on your recruiting level, that thing I mentioned previously. Um, and then, you know, you can uh, select the mental ability and archetype and just sort of build from there. Um, you know, and it'll have, you know, the wear and tear system, which is the thing I'm most excited about, is going to be very prominent in Road to Glory here. Uh, but you also have to juggle your classes, um, which I guess, I guess would work into the wear and tear, like, if you decide to sleep in instead of go to class, maybe you gain more energy for practice or something. Um, but you also have to keep your grades up and stay eligible and all that. Um, I can see that being a thing. You don't have to take exams or anything like Persona, um, but y you can do that. Um, as it says here, you'll need to ensure that you're both academically eligible and stay healthy and not be an injury risk. Um, those are three things off the field. That you gotta, you know, keep in mind with. And also, um, I don't know exactly, I said I didn't deep dive into this, but, you know, they're obviously gonna have the relationship with coach and teammates. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be like um, little conversations or, you know, uh, I know for the coach, if you follow the play that is called, you know, you'll, and you'll get trust with him or them um and then the the other thing is at the bottom here the last the last most important thing is that um you know true freshman if you're a true freshman and you do not start they will redshirt you and you'll get the build and have five years um to do everything um I, they're bringing they're doing the same thing they did in 14 from what i remember i haven't played road to glory in 14 in probably 10 years but you start out when you first get into the lineup they choose one play. The coach calls that play. You choose that play. Um, and then as you build trust with your coach and get better and get older, it goes to two plays and it goes to three plays. And then that's your choice. It's only those three plays. You don't get the whole playbook open. It's what basically broke Madden from what I've been told from Madden players. Um, is that Madden just lets you basically use the whole playbook so you could make your guy super great by just... 
concentrating on plays that work for your player specifically. I like the idea of trying to make this feel as realistic as possible. So they're letting the coach be the coach. Um, and it may be if your coach is a terrible play caller, you might want to transfer if there's a transfer window in here. So it allows you to, you know, um, you know, have realistic things like that. Um, yeah. So that's that's the road to glory stuff. Like I said, just go to EA, you know, the college football website if you want deeper stuff into that. Um, and some fun news. Um, it looks like uh, Arch Manning... Um, son of Cooper Manning, not Eli or Peyton, um, got bullied to be into the game. <laughs> what, what a way to not make it about yourself by waiting until the week before, um, the game releases to announce that you were in the game and, you know, you're not one of the, one of the other holdouts. Um, as it says in here, um, last season, he was the third string quarterback, now the backup. Um, and for some reason, um... Yeah, and oh man, this was just like none of the other people made any kind of big deal about this, and this kid better be good. Like, I mean, he's probably made more money than he he can suck and still have a lot of money because he's probably got a huge NIL deal at um, Texas, which is probably why he, he could. He could give two shits about being in this game. But I think his teammates probably bullied him into it on the side. Um, and I could see his uncles telling him, Dude, just get in the game. You can make a video about being in the game and up your brand. Like, if there's two people on the planet that know how to work their brand, it is Eli and Peyton. And you better listen to your uncles, Arch. So, yeah, I found that funny. Immediately when I saw the video, I texted Metal Militia and was like, Oh, look, Arch Manning. <laughs> Peer pressured into a video game. Um, yeah, so that was kind of fun news. Uh, moving on to... Um, I'm going to go right to here um, because there's a lot of details here. But the one thing that um, I guess this falls into the category of if it's not broke, don't fix it um, sort of things is Xbox is breaking um, Game Pass. And um, not surprisingly, it's right when the Activision stuff is coming in. But now they've made it entirely too complicated. Um, so for me personally, I am not going to be affected as much as most people um, or some people. Especially new ones hopping on for the first time, wanting to play Call of Duty, which is where this is going to become a thing. Um, is I'm the ex I'm on this. If you're watching the video, I have Xbox Ultimate. I'm going to be paying twenty bucks a month because I'm a moron. So I still get full array PC, Xbox. You know, uh, it doesn't affect me at all. I still get everything I have now. Because I'm paying the top top tier thing. Uh, where it gets complicated is if you go to Xbox Standard, which I think is a new thing, um, a new tier, you get an access to limited um, Game Pass games. Um, you don't get any day one titles. Um, and I'm assuming those limited uh, Game Pass games do not include Call of Duty. Um, so you can pay five bucks less a month. Um, get less games, and none of them day one. Um, and then they go PC Game Pass, if you just have PC. eleven ninety nine. you get everything as, like, Ultimate. EA Play, PC Game Pass, day one, everything like the first game. Um, and then you have Xbox Console, which is where the really shitty part comes in. So, you can do just individual PC Pass, get all the benefits you do individual just console because you don't have a pc you get a and it's only for existing subscribers only you get a limited number of xbox games alongside discounts but you're no longer able um to purchase this as a new subscriber but day one games are still included as they were before 
Now, the day one part is great because you want your legacy customers to have stuff they want. But you are also cutting off the games they currently have access to. And I don't think a lot of people are going to realize that until it happens. And I think this is where the real um, controversy for people that don't pay attention to news stories like this are going to be like, oh shit, why is this really popular game that I was playing for with my Game Pass no longer available to me? It's going to become a problem. Um, and now they can probably skate past it with no problem, you know, um, as they do. But, yeah, that's the one that's going to um, cause confusion. The next one is the budget one that... It comes down to... It may be better to just go monthly with this one and, like, buy it, cancel it until you have something you want to play. Um... Because I don't know what this is for. This bottom one, I can't... Maybe you guys in chat or in the YouTube comments or on Instagram or any of the... Or Discord, anything. If you can explain to me, outside of the fact of being able to play online multiplayer, what is the benefit of the Xbox Game Pass Core? The $9.99 a month one. Like, what is the benefit? You only get 25 games from Game Pass, which may you may not like any of those games, um, and you get deals and discounts. Like, you might as well save your $10. Unless if, unless if you play online multiplayer a lot. That's the only, it's the only reason to have this. It's the online multiplayer. And if you don't have a PC. Only two reasons to have this. You you would be better off if you want to use the Game Pass the way you have been using it is to just go for the standard. Just pay the extra $5 a month. I know you're saying, oh, it's just $5, was it? I know some people, that's what I'm saying. This is the one that is a little bit useless. You would be better off doing the standard, canceling it when you're done, or just do Ultimate. Just do Ultimate for 20 bucks um, for one month. Play the game day one that's coming out. Play the shit out of it for 20 bucks. Cancel, you know, and then come back a couple months later if you want to play that game again. 20 more bucks. That's that. This bottom one to me is useless unless if you're a consistent online gamer and don't have a PC. That is the only reason for core. The other shit they give you with Core is just, sure, whatever. Because there's no guarantee those 25 games are going to be anything you want to play. So they're bas you're basically paying 10 bucks a month to play, I don't know, Minecraft online? Um, so, in that case, you're better off getting the PC Game Pass <laughs> and playing Minecraft on your computer. But, either way... I don't know. I I know why they did it. It's money. They have to make up the money that they spent to get Activision, uh, Blizzard, and King. Or I should just say, for getting King, because King is where they're making their money. As much as as much as we love Activision and Blizzard, and sometimes that can be in quotes too. They're not the ones making the sixty nine billion dollars. Nice. Um deal worth it. It's King and Candy Crush and all the phone stuff. So essentially, Game Pass got changed because Microsoft jumped into the phone game market. They need to make some of their money back while they wait for the phone game market to explode for them. Um, and it's just... You know, there's ways around it as this IGN article, you can check out this Rebecca Valentine article, you know, Amazon... Um, has three months at a discounted rate, which can save you fifteen dollars for three months um, for ultimate. You know, that's up to you. I, I I don't know your situation, so but it's just kind of frustrated me. Like I said, it's one of those things where it's not going to affect me at all. I don't have to start paying this till September. 
I'm still going to be paying the 20 bucks a month. The only thing is, I think I'm going to start paying $12 a month for Kitty Ashcat's PC Game Pass, but... Yeah. So, we'll see. If, if Game Pass Core includes PC... No, no, the three. I can, I can spend the three bucks. Or two bucks. I was trying to talk myself into getting hardcore. Because really, she just plays Minecraft on the Xbox account. And I guess now she plays Siege? Yeah, she's playing Rainbow Six Siege for some reason. I think she likes a boy that plays it or something. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so, look into this if you have Game Pass. It It's starting to... It took a little dip from its best deal in gaming to being up there with just about what PlayStation does, almost. Alright, moving on to more fun news. Bioware is teasing nudity in Dragon Age Veilguard because we're all still teenage boys. Um, basically, this tease is just to say to people, um, hey, we're making an adult mature RPG here. We're not doing any of that like, uh, PG-13 RPG here. Come see the R. We have titties. Um, the fun part about this is that they have, um, you know, and they, like, leak this by being sh shy about it. When Baldur's Gate 3 did not mention it at all, and there's a full-blown, like, as close as you can get without being a porn game, sex scenes in that game. Um, and didn't really make a point of it. It just shows that Bioware is just trying to say, hey, look, we're also mature. Look at this. Look at this. We, we also have dong in it. We might have some dong. You don't know. You don't know. We might have penis one, two, and three. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this was very funny news when I saw it. I'm like, that just shows that pre-orders aren't going great. <laughs> that you they feel the need to leak this. And I don't know who is going to attract that will pre-order a game based on this. But, um, yeah. So, if you like your nudity in RPGs, which is perfectly fine by me, you know, Baldur's Gate was great and besides the fact that everybody was horny in that game which is awesome um it was it was tasteful just like in the witcher witcher 3 was as much as you could just go to the brothel over and over again and see the same stupid sex scene um you know it felt like it was a part of the game all right speaking of like pc mod news um Fun thing here, um, Persona 4 Golden um, got a PC mod that brings it back to the uh, original um, PS2 look. Uh, which I haven't played Golden, so I don't really know what the differences are. But here's some screenshots. How is this showing up on stream? Alright, we're doing good. Okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't cut it off. Um, so like, I'm guessing these things... will look a little like like less good I mean this is how I remember the PS2 looking so if this is the mod screenshots um, yeah so there's a lot of photos here um, Yeah, I don't know. Those might just be golden screenshots. But anyway. Um, yeah, if you if you like your demakes of things, um, this is coming for Persona 4 Golden. Um, I like the newer looks for these games. Like the little chibi characters or whatever they're called that are in this. I think the way they're presented in Reload, Persona 3, which we're playing through... Um, I feel more comfortable playing that game because it doesn't, it feels more serious. And that just might be a personal thing for me. Um, 
So, yeah, but if but if you want to play, you know, Golden and have it look like the PS2 game, because either A, you don't have, um, you know, an emulator and downloaded the ROM, or you don't really feel like spending the 100 plus bucks or whatever to cost to buy it online, this version, um, you can do this. I don't see, I, I like the updated stuff so this does not affect me, but I thought it was a cool thing that they that they are doing, that someone's working through this. They're 40% done, um, so you got a little while if you want to wait for the whole game. Alright, next up, um, Fallout London. Um, we had mentioned this earlier, it's the only reason I brought it up. Um, when um, 76 and the Fallout 4 update came out, um, they had to delay it. Um, uh, because of, of all that stuff going on, because things changed. So, um, looks like they're finally, uh, nearing completion. Uh, the developer said the, uh, the end is in sight. Um, they're just waiting for the final green light. Um, and get through. Um, no date yet, um, from what I can see here. Um, but we might have something, uh, coming out soon. Um. So if you were looking forward to the London mod for uh, Fallout 4, um, you know, it, it's it's coming. Or Fallout 70, I think it's Fallout 4, right? Yeah, Fallout 4 mod. For some reason, it kept going in my head that it might be a 76 mod, but no, it's a 4 mod. But yeah. You're just running through QA and stuff like that, so if you're looking forward to this, it is still going forward here so I, I'm happy to see that I am in I am um, I am I'm I might jump in back into this when this comes out just to see what this is like all right next story um, to no surprise to anyone um, the Nintendo switch is now the longest running Nintendo home console um, Without being replaced within a different model or a different named system um, since the NES. Um, the Switch has lasted almost 2,700 days, um, so a little over seven years. Um, you know, the NES lasted that long until the Super Nintendo came out. Um, it's kind of because they didn't need to um, update it because everything they were doing was working fine. And even though it was it was underpowered for what was kind of out at the time, um, it still played Nintendo games really well. Um, and everything was fine. They didn't they didn't need to do um, any kind of upgrading. Like the the other two, like we lasted until the motion control craze was gone and then they went to Wii U. Um, and then the 3DS and DS and all had like DS Lite and DSi and 2DS and, you know, all these different iterations on it. Um, like the, the QLED screen doesn't count as a new system. It's just an update of the system. Um, it hasn't been replaced um, by anything. Um, so, yeah, it's seven years. So, Switch 2 definitely coming next year. Um, depending on what games are on it, I may get it at launch. I didn't get my Switch at launch. Um, so, it took me a little while to get Breath of the Wild. Uh, so, probably going to be the same thing um, for this. Um, so, yeah, I just need to see what is coming out uh, for Switch 2. But... That is kind of amazing. I mainly pulled this story just for that number. It, when, whenever you put something into days, it just makes me feel ancient. Like, if they would have said, oh, it's seven years. I'm like, oh, yeah, seven years. That's not... But if you tell me it's 2,688 days, for some reason, that just feels much longer. And, yeah. So, it will definitely make it over the... It'll make it close to the 2700 um, day mark. I'm going to say we'll cross it uh, because I do not think that 
Switch 2 is coming out in April. Um, I think it's going to be a fall release. Um, so they will definitely get to the, you know, 200 and something days they need. Um, because they'll probably get to 365 because they'll pass this point. So, it'll get over three. It'll get over 3,000 days. So, yeah. Been a long, long road with the Switch. Alright, and final two stories. Um, as usual, PlayStation Plus revealed its uh, catalog um, for July. Um, so, the list is here. Uh, Remnant 2, um, Crisis Core Reunion. Um, reminder, these are for the extra tier or above. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, Crisis Core, uh, Mountain Blade 2, Jackbox Party Pack 9, which I think I've already purchased. Um, Pathfinder, uh, No More Heroes 3, uh, Travis Strikes Again, um, the No More Heroes Complete Edition. Uh, Deadcraft, Steep, which is that, um, that action that adventure sports, like, extreme sports game, um, from Ubisoft, I believe. Um. Job Simulator, if you have PSVR. Uh, Summoner. Um, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. And um, uh, Janine the Ark. Um, and yeah, those are the games for July. So here's some quick looks at these games. Here. Yeah, speaking of style, no more heroes. Um... Steep is not loading. But yes, it is the Extreme... There you go. It is the Extreme Sports Univision. Um, I, Ubisoft. Um, and there was Olympics on there. Oh, I didn't even notice that. But yeah, so... This is what you got to look forward to. Um, if you do have PlayStation Plus Extra, which I do have. I had Premium for a while. Um... And then that, they raise that price, and I just like, yeah, I know what, I'm going back to extra. Um, I may even go down to basic or whatever that level is on it. But I'm afraid, for streaming purposes, I'm afraid um, that I'll have something on there that I need extra for. So Sony's got my money while I do this. And finally, not so much video game news, but kind of, it kind of intertwines with video games. Um... Redbox is uh, shutting down its um, DVD kiosk, um, which, if you're sitting here asking, what's a DVD, Mark? I want to strangle you through the computer. Uh, but two, um, these used to have games in them and might still have games in them in some locations. Um, I have a good collection of, I think, PS3 games um, that, that I got uh, for by not returning... Um, a red box game for a month, and then they just charge you the full price, um, like twenty bucks or twenty five bucks or whatever it was, and then they send you the box. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've done I've done a good bit of that. So um, red box just spells the end of like rentals. You know, if you're gonna rent something, you'll probably rent it off Amazon Prime at this point. Um, you know, it goes the way of the dodo, as they say. Um, like Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, all those things. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, the Chicken for the Soup, or Chicken Soup for the Soul people, oh, uh, went Chapter 7 bankruptcy, okay. Not sad about those people going Chapter 7 bankruptcy, but, um, yeah. Yeah, so if you ever rent it from these kiosks, or still do, sorry if you still do, they're going to be gone soon. Uh, but yeah, it's the last remnant of that physical media past. Just gone. Poof. Um, I guess the one thing still remaining is Gamefly? Um, you know, uh, if you're renting games. But that was always a, a shitty thing when games became, like... Like, I remember having Gamefly and being able to basically get what I wanted, um, with a little delay. But once things became more popular, it became impossible to get anything new. And it became useless to have the um, subscription. So, But Gamefly is still there if you want to rent games. Again, I don't know why people would do that um, still. But yeah, yeah, that's about it. 
Um, I only say that because if there's going to be places that have games to rent, try and see if you can find a mom-and-pop video store um, and give them your money instead of Gamefly. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so with that sad note, um, that's going to do it for us today. Um, let me go back to Big Mark here. Thank you for joining me. It's been fun as always. Um, as usual, run down the schedule. If you're watching this live on Twitch, thank you so much. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to our podcast, I am live on our Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash gamevaultpod, every Friday at 9 p.m. And um, so if you want to be live in the chat and talk to me and discuss the news stories I'm doing, I'd love to interact with the chat. Um, you can interact with Night Duck and Metal Militia in there as well. Um, it's a fun time. You guys should come on in. Um, so for those of you watching live right now, um, tomorrow, uh, which is Saturday, Persona 3 stream will go. Um, we're getting pretty close to the end. I'm probably going to try and make that a three to four hour stream to see if I can maybe push closer to the end. Um, especially since I had no softball this weekend. So, but that's just a matter of how much I can get pulled away from ZZZ. So we'll see. Sunday, we'll start back up with Nier. Hopefully I fixed the problem. I think I have. Um... And then we'll be right back on Monday. Uh, podcast will drop. YouTube video will drop. Um, and then we will be playing part two of Donkey Kong Country for our retro roulette. Um, yeah, and then we will have a special stream on Thursday, it looks like. Um, because I think Tuesday I have TC Tam. Wednesday I have something. So, yeah, it'll probably definitely be... Thursday, I will just show off uh, College Football 25 since we've been talking about it a lot, um, as I will be playing the 10-day trial um, on um, EA Play. Um, I will see if other people are streaming it before I do that, because the game officially releases on Friday, but I'm assuming since the general public can be able to play it, um, we should be able to stream it. So, be on the lookout for that. But yeah, thank you guys for joining me. As always, we're on Instagram, you know, threads, Blue Sky if you're there, um, you know, and we have our Discord. Um, I don't know if I need to give you access or someone needs to. If if so, just hit either the Game Vault Pod um, Twitter feed or you hit up Off The Mark Tweet um, for me personally. Um, if you do need access to the Discord, we'd love to join you there and talk in with you. We have a great, um, if you go to, I think it's in the Game Vault, right? We have a great art page, which mainly is Kitty Ashcat for the most part. Um, everyone's favorite niece. Um, she, as good as my niece is at softball, my other niece is good at drawing. Um, it was essentially like they each got the personality of their parents. My brother-in-law is an athlete. My sister is an artist. <laughs> so um, instead of someone being a hybrid, they just both took one of those and made it their own. So, yeah, it's cool in there, in the Discord. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys again for joining me. Um, yeah, hope you guys have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye!